Hey everybody, welcome to the Kickstarter preview for Dead Men Tell No Tales. This is going to be released from Minion Games. It's a cooperative game, plays two to six players. The designer is Kane Klinko. Um, it basically, the theme of the game is you have been on a ship with your compatriots and you have bombarded and shredded uh, the dread pirate ship of undead pirates. So as this ship is burning and sinking into the ocean, you're going to jump on the ship and try to recover a bunch of treasure for it and then try to get that treasure off of the ship and then escape. You could be dealing with a lot of undead minions and the fire and other catastrophes that are gonna happen throughout the game. So let's jump into how it works and I'll come back and give you my impressions. Okay, I've got the game uh, sort of set up how it might be for a two player game. A couple things to note here. You can see the starting tiles, this large tile here, and this is the entrance to the ship. We can see here this little boat here and the two players each have their little pawns there. They're about to board the ship here. These dice here have been rolled and you can see on the board there's different colors. So there's red for red dice and yellow for yellow dice. These are rolled. If there are six, you re-roll them. And basically what this is is the fire level. And the reason you re-roll the sixes is because once these hit six, there's an explosion. And part of what players are gonna be doing is tamping down these fires as they're rummaging through this sinking pirate ship for treasure. Players will also have a little player board here. And as you can see, we have this dial and this is going to track our fatigue. So as this goes up, we're going to be unable to move into rooms that have a fire level uh, equal to or higher than this number. So you can see if you were to get really fatigued, you could hardly move into any rooms because anything that's a three or a higher, you cannot move into. So players are gonna to wanna to take actions to manage their fatigue. And speaking of actions, uh, you're gonna start with action tokens here. And so as you spend and do different actions, maybe you move, uh, you put out a fire, you try to improve your abilities a little bit, you're gonna move this over and spend those. Well, one thing that's cool about this game that you can do is let's say I've done three things and I really don't have anything else I feel like doing. Well, I can take and pass these two action tokens to the player on my left. Now they have a kind of use it or lose it. They have to spend those two and then maybe they can have a really big turn. That's really cool. It might be something that players negotiate about. But either as they spend them or if they really don't want to spend them, they're just going to give them back to me. So I'm always going to start with at least uh, five action tokens here. Now. I've randomly drawn this character card here and you can see her special ability is this player has six actions to use each turn instead of five. So players are going to draw from this deck of different character cards. They're gonna have different, uh, different special abilities. And as you can see here, uh, the art looks pretty good. Uh, but I should note, uh, this is definitely not final. It's a prototype. That's a very well done prototype at that. Uh, players will also draw an item card here. We can see we have a sword here and this is add one strength in a battle. Now, what's interesting about this game as well is all of the leftover items here are going to be in a face-up pile. So you're always going to have access to these, but you can take actions to actually swap your current item uh, for an item that's in the pile. So I'll explain that more in a minute. The last thing to note here is you can actually take actions to increase your abilities in combat. And you can see plus one, plus two, all the way up to plus four and that's gonna modify your combat rolls. So what are some of the different actions and things that you're gonna do on your turn as you're trying to recover treasure from this burning wreck? Well, the first thing you're gonna do always is draw some tiles and kind of explore the ship. Now you can see we have these sort of turn crooked. Now for each player in the game, we're gonna take two tiles from the top and sort of twist them. So each player on their first turn is actually going to explore two tiles at once and then after everybody's taken a turn, you're going to just going to explore one tile. So we're going to take this tile here. What you're going to do is look and you're trying to line up the doorways here. We can see there's a little doorway there. Now, one thing that you need to do is make sure that you have a pathway and you can add tiles to the ship. So it's going to kind of suggest you or, or make you sort of grow the ship bigger so you don't make it too tight. Because if you ever cannot add a legal tile to the ship, you sort of close it off, you're immediately gonna lose the game. That's an interesting little mechanic they have to make it seem sort of like a bottomless ship. The other thing we're gonna do here is we can see we have a die to add. So we're gonna go ahead and put a red two die there. And then we also have two little stashes. Now what we're gonna do there is we're gonna draw tiles out of this bag here. Now there's a variety of different things that you can find in this bag. We could find here an enemy, and you can see here's sort of a level three enemy, but once we defeat him, he's gonna be able to hand us over here uh, some grog here, and this will help us recover some of our fatigue. Another thing we might see is a guard, and the guard's a little bit tougher. Now the enemies are gonna move around here, but the guards are what's going to have 
uh, treasure. The guards are not going to move. They're going to guard the treasure with their life. They're not going to leave their treasure. But as these enemies move around, you know, you're going to be able to kill them for some things that will help you. But what you're really going after here are these guards. And as you, you know, kill these, you'll be able to start picking these things up and taking them out of the ship. You may also find other cutlasses here, these little swords, and these are going to help you uh, sort of keep your combat up. They'll make more sense in a second. And of course, you're not going to be able to just get those for free because they're going to be guarded by these enemies here. And as well, you might have these trap doors. Now, if you look over here, we can see this one has a trap door printed on it. And anytime you get a trap door there, you're going to have these little cubes come out. And these are sort of uh, benign crew members, sort of like the living crew uh, under the uh, you know guise of these undead armies here. So these are kind of easy to get rid of. Uh, you don't ever want to have too many of these out. If you ever have to add a crew member and they're on the left, you're going to lose the game from being overwhelmed. So you're going to want to have to deplete those. So those are some of the things that you might get when you flip a tile. Another thing to note on these tiles, if we take a look and put this one here, you're going to have... Uh, these little powder kegs and this means when this die here, which is going to start at a two when this die hits a four You're gonna have an explosion basically out that doorway now if this is blocked for some reason Let's say we had another tile like so uh, Then it would actually you kind of work clockwise and it's definitely going to go out one door and what that's going to do Let's just put this like that is raise the die there by by one So if we move this down here like so let's say this raise up to a four we had a die down here and let's say it was at a three for some reason and then it's going to explode and this is going to raise this up by four so you can have a little bit of a chain reaction and that's not something you want to do <laughs> so after exploring whatever tiles that you're going to explore for your turn what are the actions that you can actually do so the first action you might do is to move now when you move you're going to have to check fatigue and when you, what I mean by checking fatigue is when you move from one room to another, you're going to check the difference in the fire level. Well, since we just moved from this little dinghy boat here, that's basically moving from zero to four. So we're going to lose four fatigue. Now, if we had moved from this room to this room, we're not going to lose any because we're going to a lesser room. And for example, if we move from here to here, you would get two fatigue. Now you can also move two rooms. It's kind of like doing a run. When you do that, you're going to add two fatigue to whatever you're going to lose. So let's say we were going to run from here to here. We wanted to go take care of that crewman. So we're going to move from here. We're going to lose four fatigue and then from here zero. But since we ran and moved two rooms, we're going to add two. So for a total of six fatigue. So you can see there by losing, going down to six fatigue there, we've already locked ourselves out of any rooms that are five. So you can spend fatigue quicker than you want to. Now the other thing you might do as an action would be to lower the fire, start to put the fire out. So we lower that from a four to a three. And the next action would be to remove a crew member. We can do that in from an adjacent spot, or if we're in the same spot, we can remove one crew member uh, from the board there. You can also rest, and that's going to just lower your fatigue there uh, by two for the rest action. The next thing you can do for an action is raise your battle strength. So we can go, you know, move it up to a maximum of plus four. And almost finally, you can swap an item card. So if I wanted to put the sword away and use this rum here, I get one free rest action per turn. Uh, this dagger here, one free eliminate crew member action. So different things that I can do. But to get another item card, you have to spend an action. Now you can do that as many times as you want, and you can cool, do these cool little combos and things, and it basically, like the party has a uh, you know store of items that they're able to swap and share. Uh, so you can do some gamesmanship there. Now there's one last action that you can do, and that is to pick up a token, to pick up an item. But to do that, you're gonna have to fight somebody. Now once I move into here, it doesn't take me an action to fight this guy. Once you move in, you're immediately going to have a fight. So let's talk about a fight. Uh, but once the fight is over, then I can take an action here to pick up whatever token that might be. It might be treasure, in this case a cutlass, or whatever. But let's talk about fighting first. So fighting is actually very simple in this game. Uh, let's go through it. You've got an enemy here with a strength of five. I'm gonna roll a d6, and I've got a five. So I'm good to go there. But let's say I rolled a four or something like that. Now one thing that I can do is if I want, I can spend or exert this battle strength here and move that all the way back down to zero and add that to my die roll. That's something that's very interesting to consider. But one thing that's cool about this game is as this goes up, as you acquire cutlasses, you can add these to your track here so that let's say I've added these two through def defeating other monsters. I get this up to plus three, I'm gonna use it. Now she's only gonna go back down to a plus two. So it's sort of like training and leveling up your guy as you explore the pirate ship. It's a pretty cool little uh, mechanic there. Now, of course, above and beyond that, you also have your items. So your sword will add plus one strength to battle. 
Uh, this gun here may attack from an adjacent room for an action once per turn, and no fatigue is lost for a failed attack. Well, let's talk about a failed attack. Let's say I had rolled a four against the five here, and I didn't have any modifiers, I didn't want to spend my battle strength. You're going to lose the fatigue of the difference. So in this case, I would only lose one fatigue. So in this case, I might let that go. I may save up my battle strength, you know, for another fat battle. So I'm gonna lose one fatigue, and then you have to re-roll the battle die. And it's just a simple little table, you're gonna look at it. If you roll a one or a two, the enemy is gonna retreat into adjacent space. If you roll a three or four, you have to retreat into an adjacent space, and you're going to lose fatigue as if you had moved. So if we look at here, I'd probably wanna go into here because I only lose one fatigue. Whereas if I, let's say I was forced to go in here for some reason, I have to lose another three on top of the one I just lost. Uh, if you roll a five, you have to fight him again. If you roll a six, you get a choice. So you could fight him again if you wanted or make him retreat or whatever you wanted to do. And the reason you might choose is because let's say you were gonna move him into another spot uh, where your buddy was and he was really low on fatigue. You didn't really wanna put him in harm's way. Now after you defeat the monster, you can take an action to pick up the item. So here I could pick up a cutlass to add to my battle board. But what you really want are treasures. And here you can see this guy would have given me a treasure. Now when you pick up a treasure, you go ahead and put the treasure there in your little stash, but now you're considered to be in like looting mode. And when you're in looting mode, there's only three actions you can do. A, you can only walk, you can't run, so you can only move one space. You can rest to gain two fatigue, or you can swap out item cards if you want. That's it, that's the only three things you can do as you're looting. So it kind of hampers you, you know, you're carrying all this treasure, trying to get it out to either the first entrance, or if you've placed the last tile, uh, if it has an exit that's leaving the board, you can actually put this little boat here and put that sort of as an extra little dinghy to put your treasure on. So what you're trying to do is get out of the ship. And once you get the outside of the ship, then you can take a breather, so to speak, and you put the treasure token uh, to the side, and then you actually can lower your fatigue by half. Uh, so you can actually do that even if you don't have treasure. You can just leave the ship, take a breather, and then you know you pass your. If you have any action tokens, you can pass those to your uh, your friend, and you can reduce your fatigue uh, by half there. But you, what you want to do is get the tokens off the ship, and based on number of players, you want to get a certain number of the treasure tokens off the ship to win the game. Now, after every player takes a turn, you're going to resolve here what's called Skeleton Revenge, and this is a deck of sort of uh, event cards, and this is all the bad stuff that's going to happen to you, and how you're going to resolve these. Now, the first thing to take note of here is any card with this explosion icon. There's actually three of these in the deck. Once you've drawn your third one, you're gonna take and reshuffle all of these skeleton, or skeleton Revenge cards uh, back to, into the deck so you have a chance of drawing these again and of course drawing any cards that you might have already drawn. Now you may also draw a card here uh, that has a picture of a die on it and that means you're basically going to increase any of that color die on the board. Now if anything ever gets to the powder keg level, and explodes or it gets to a six and explodes, you're going to also increase the explosion track. Now if you get to a six, you're gonna turn over that tile and that tile is going to be you know, blocked off and out of the game. So this also will hamper you, uh, it could, when you're placing tiles. Because remember, you can lose a game if you can't place a tile into an open doorway. The next type of action on these cards is going to be this trap door there, you see that? So that's anywhere that has a trap door, you're going to have to spawn uh, some different crew members there. Now if you get this one here, you can see this has this little arrows there. That means the crew members are going to spread out. That actually doesn't mean to move the crew members, but every spot that you have crew members, you're going to add adjacent crew members so they've kind of spread out and theoretically, you know, new ones have come out through the trap door so they start to kind of spread over the ship. So the last icon down here, you can see this little enemy token here. That means the enemies are going to move. Now again, anybody that's sitting on top of a treasure, that's a guard. The guards stay put. But enemies are gonna to move to an adjacent spot, basically trying to move to the closest pirate. If there's a equidistant, then the players just choose. So those are gonna move. If they move into a spot where you currently are, you gotta do battle with them right away. Basically, anytime you are in the same room as an enemy, you gotta fight them. Now I should mention before I give you my impressions that if you are in a room where that explodes, you're going to immediately die. Uh, you of course always also die, you know, if your fatigue hits 15, it hits the crossbows, excuse me. And uh, you know, if you're carrying a treasure, you're gonna drop that wherever you are. Everything else is gonna get discarded. You're actually gonna lose the item out of the game. It's gonna be one last item for players to use, but you can come back in with a, you know, another pirate or something. Uh, but you wanna be careful because if you die in an explosion, then this treasure is gonna get removed and destroyed. 
And so if you enough treasures get destroyed that you can't win the game, that's another way that you can lose. Well, that's pretty much how you play the game. Uh, let's go back to my talking head. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the overview. Uh, I think the first impression that, that folks are gonna get is like, okay, this is, it feels kind of pandemic-y in the way that you have the fires, you have sort of the opportunity for chain reactions of the fires exploding uh, and stuff like that. But, you know, this is not like pandemic. I mean, as you play it out, it has those puzzle elements, which is cool, but there's also some other stuff happening. You know, you've got the different cards, the combat is interesting. You can kind of push your luck with the combat or maybe you know take a hit on the combat to hopefully have somebody else come along later and you've got this sort of destroying environment because as it's kind of cool because you kind of build up the pirate ship <laughs> after a while like inevitably you know you just stuff starts blowing up and exploding and so you're kind of you're exploring and then you're kind of running from the fire and stuff that happens and you're trying to spend actions to kind of tech up and fight some of the guards which are the harder monsters to kill and those are the ones that have the treasure that you win the game so you gotta you know, balance that spending your time kind of developing yourself in a very sort of streamlined role-playing aspect. I don't wanna oversell that too much, uh, but it's interesting because as you discover cutlasses, like I showed you, uh, you know, when you use your battle strength, it doesn't go down a whole lot. So then you can start fighting more and more and more and take a little bit more chances and feel more confident about who you're gonna fight. Uh, so that's neat. And I like kind of the management of the action tokens, how you can send those around the table, well, to the guy on your left. And you know you can, he's in a much better spot to do more, and so it's not a big deal. I feel like I've helped him. You know, one thing that's interesting about co-ops is you don't always feel like you're doing teamwork, and this kind of adds to that. So it's 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 a piece of the puzzle, but you are just you know front loading the action so you feel like oh look i gave up my turn to help you and i'm very interested in what you're doing on your turn so that's a very neat aspect i like the thematicness of it you know it's a, a theme that i don't think i've seen you know it's a pirate theme which we've seen a little bit of but it's also undead pirates you know a ship is sinking and there's treasure and you know you've got different items you can get um you know so it, the fatigue aspect and moving around and you know moving through the fire is really cool uh so it's a definitely a unique you know thematic co-op with this environment and it's very tense as you get to the end like i said as you're running from the ship you're sinking and all that so trying to get that last treasure out you know you're you're looting so you you just you know, all you can do is help your, you can't help but do anything but walk and you can't fight anybody or excuse me not you can fight people but you can't uh you know take out the crew or do anything to take the fire down so it's almost like you're selfishly you know you know taking the loot even though it's a cooperative game uh so that's a pretty cool aspect so definitely take a look at it uh you know it's got it's on kickstarter i'll of course have the link here on the video uh, but uh, dead men tell no tales thanks